Today we're taking a dream trip to the Champagne region of France. Home to the biggest producers of the famous sparkling wine, it offers a perfect blend of scenic views, romance and history, and it's just a three hour drive from Paris. An idyllic weekend getaway spot. On the three day journey, we want to discover three different cities, stay at three hotels, and visit three different Champagne houses. Starting with our first stop at Reims. It's one of the three biggest hubs in the region, Hossin Famous produces, and it's also known as the city of coronation as 33 French kings were crowned in the famous Notre Dame de Reims, and we decided to stay right next to it to fully enjoy the views. I must say we were charmed by the hotel and the pictures, but it was a little disappointing experience given the price. It wasn't bad, but it was kind of average and you can definitely get a better value for money. I think our impression was also dictated by the room we chose. We were charmed by the old building where this hotel is located, but then the room we got was on the newer build-up floor, which didn't have this old charm. And the layout of the room was also a little strange. Anyway, undeniable advantage of this place was its location. It's just across the cathedral that has a lot of history, but it's also an amazing building that not only strikes you with how majestic it is, but also how intricate the design details are from the tall ceilings to the detailed stained glass windows. Just the architecture alone is enough to spend quite a bit of time here exploring different details. But to fully experience this place, a guide is a way to go. Because this way you can not only enjoy the beauty of it, but also learn the history behind the place. Welcome to Epernay. This is the second city on our trip. It's part of UNESCO World Heritage. The Champagne hillsides, houses and cellars are celebrated for their unique landscapes and cultural significance that earn them the place as a part of World Heritage. And this is a home to the most famous Champagne houses located on a street with a very poetic name, Avenue de Champagne. We're going to visit three different houses the two famous ones, Perrier Joyeux and Moya de Chandon. And then we found the one which is a little lesser known. This one is named Boiselle and we're gonna do the tasting but also the tour and learn more about how champagne is produced. Founded in 1811 by a couple, Pierre-Nicolas Perrier and his wife, Rosa de Lay was the first to make dry brewed champagne in 1846. The house is also known for its floral and elegant champagnes. The famous floral design inspired by nature and aiming to reflect the elegance of their champagnes for the visual representation. Moya de Chandon is one of the most famous houses in the world and it was founded in the middle of the 18th century by Claude Moet. It became popular for creating the Don Perignon, named after the monk who contributed to champagne making techniques. Moet de Chandon is known for producing high quality champagnes that are often associated with celebrities and luxury. They're an official champagne for the Oscars and have a long history of being enjoyed by royalty and celebrities. And because it's so popular, without a plan, we were not able to get a place at their tasting tour, but we were able to enjoy a snack on their beautiful terrace. So you guessed it, if you're planning on visiting this one, book in advance. But if you couldn't get the spot on this one, I highly recommend our next spot, which is called Boiselle. This champagne house is a little different from the other ones we've seen. We really liked it because it's family owned since 1834. Unlike the famous ones owned by the big brands, this was family owned for more than six generations. And it's famous for the rich history and their dedication to quality. They're also known for using the best grapes, including Grand and the Premier Cru, which is, if you don't know, is the highest grade of the grapes quality. 
On the tour, they show you step-by-step -step process of how the champagne is produced. You start from the first floor and you see the maps and the barrels, and then you go on the ground where they show you the rest of the process, the fermentation part. And then in the cellar, they also have some of the oldest bottles. They were hidden during the war times, and this is how they got preserved. Once you've done with the tour, you go back upstairs and they bring you to this beautifully decorated room for the champagne tasting. You can choose different options. We opted for two different champagnes that are their signature ones, and those were delicious. The next stop is the second hotel, but it's also a destination of its own. It's called the Royal Champagne Hotel and Spa. It's a five-star hotel that is one of the top three in Europe. It was one of the favorite places for Napoleon and his generals. And today's renovation integrates architectural design and it has beautiful rooms with just an amazing view to this beautiful landscape and cascading vineyards. You also have the same views from the beautiful terrace. And this is a terrace of a Michelin star restaurant called Le Royal. And we came here for lunch. This is definitely the best value for money compared to dinner. And it also offers you this beautiful panoramic view, which you won't see when the sun is down. The lunch offered a fixed menu of three courses, the starter, the main, and the dessert. Needless to say, the lunch was delicious. We had a starter, which was a fresh soup, and then one meat and one fish course and our favorite was the dessert. It was a perfect amount of sweet and then the rhubarb added the contrast taste, so yes, definitely recommend it. And the last town we'll discover on this trip is called Village de Autreville and it's one of the prettiest villages in all of Champagne with its medieval streets, charming buildings and handmade signs. And we came in the summer seasons of the lavender was in full bloom and in general this village just has so many beautiful flowers and greeneries and houses, yeah. So it's just an amazing spot to walk around and enjoy the beauty. It also has a few champagne houses, great options with amazing views. And the last, last stop of the trip is our third hotel called Loisium, and we absolutely loved it. It's located right in the middle of the vineyards. It has a beautiful pool just at the foot of the vineyards. We opted for a junior suite and had the stunning views right from the bedside, comfortable room and plenty of space. We also had a delicious dinner at the restaurant with champagne, obviously, and stunning views from the windows. And this concludes our trip. I hope you enjoyed exploring Champagne with us. And this is definitely a bucket list destination, so when you get a chance, definitely go there.